All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you had a wonderful day. It was absolutely wild in the market. If you were there intraday, everything from the pre-market in the CPI all the way to the opening bell and first hour, even end of the day, it looked absolutely insane. We were down even 1.8% at one point and then ended up by 1% on the SPY, 2% on the NASDAQ, but that's the thing. If you just look at how things moved at the numbers, the S&P moved 0.07% higher than what the option market was pricing in yesterday. So this was an unexpected, expected move. A lot of people were asking questions. There was a lot of moving parts. Again, everything from inflation data and what happened with the CPI down to the rate cuts in the policy next week, and then even the chip stocks in NVIDIA and a couple of other things. So we have a few things we're going to go over. I'm going to recap what happened, what we are looking for for tomorrow the plays that we made because there was a couple of insane plays man from the S&P down to Nvidia so we're going to go over that and then what you are looking for because there are some very big things right now in the market that I think a lot of you need to pay attention to actually no let me just tell you right now bro the yield curve is steepening rapidly. I don't know any other way to say this as explicitly, but the big question I got today, somebody asked as they were saying, is it time to buy TLT? The yield curve is steepening. And I think you should put your hands up like we've talked about because it was kind of even pump faking around August. And you see there has been progress on the bonds in the yield curve, but it's not like those plays went insane. So if you are looking for the big one, you need things to get aggressive. But what I've been telling people, now is the time to pay attention. So I have a little bit of bond analysis and yield curve stuff that I want to go over so i have all of that the plays the plays that we made what i need from you a thumbs up on the video make sure you're subscribed and if you don't know we are live monday through friday 30 minutes before open youtube.com slash the stack market we will see you there in the morning baby run it I'm up and I'm down, but the sound like progression. Farming never plans if he waits for perfection. I think it's a doubt. All right, off the bat, I have a couple of updates. One, I did things a little different with like bright letters. Let, let me know if you like this, but two, if you haven't noticed, we've done a lot of live watch lists. It's honestly been crazy since August, and it's been a lot of fun, but now this one is not live here today, but I am posting this much later. I might switch the schedule around, so I want to know what you think, but regardless, I think I'm probably going to switch it. So I hope you enjoy this. Let me know, but I do hope you like what I did here with some of the pretty colors, but the first key that we have to talk about is what happened today? There was a couple parts. One part was reaction to the data, the core inflation. That actually came in a little hotter than expected. That was not good. That was the negative part about today that kind of caught people off guard. But like we were talking about yesterday, there's been so much progress and even the surprise print to the upside, it was still a number that was in the low range. It's not as if people are scared of inflation and then the headline number that came down. That was the good part. But one thing I did talk about, and it's kind of concerning because the sad reality is somebody, another question they asked today on stream, they're like, what happens if we had a rate rise after the cuts? And that shouldn't happen. I don't think that will happen. I don't think that's the base case. I think Powell is trying to avoid that, but that would be very bad. And why I say that would be very bad, because that would be a carbon copy at that point of what happened from like 1970 to 1980. So why I'm bringing all of that up because this whole thing, even if it's not supposed to happen, because if you do look at today's CPI report, even though the numbers and the progress has been what everybody is looking for, some things are still really elevated and the goals haven't been met. Honestly, it's kind of surprising, but 
the real estate has not came down. That actually even went up today. If you remember how many times Powell and all these Fed people are like, oh, they're going to renew leases and it's going to come down. Yeah, that's never happened. Supercore is still up there. Actually, if you go look, even in the last 12 months, rent and owner's equivalent of rent, it's up around five and a half or six percent in the last 12 months. That is almost double the Fed mandate or triple the Fed two percent mandate. And then even then on this report, food, even though they try to exp exclude it with the core, even in the last year, it's up around like three or four percent, depending on food at home or away from home. That is still elevated. And then there's a bunch of other little things. But when it's all said and done, there is some cause of concern. But as far as today was concerned, that gave us an interesting reaction on bonds, the market, and it did give you movement, but it's not like the data was important. That's all what we were saying all day yesterday. And the fact of the matter is right when that data did come out, even though some was good, some was bad. Everybody was just saying, yeah, we're going to get a quarter basis point cut still. This doesn't change that. And then they took 0.5 off of the table. The other part of today was NVIDIA. There was a NVIDIA event. They were at a Goldman conference. Some people want to blame NVIDIA. I don't think that's why we went up. I think there was a lot of different factors today, and it was just factoring into the 1% that was priced in. I think we overshot on both directions to end up practically right where everything was priced in, and it doesn't. You know, My problem with how today moved is that it was a pretty crazy move but even then for September it's not like it gives us much direction this is still the worst start to September in about like 50 or 60 years and even though these last couple days kind of look like it's going up look at how wide the wicks and the range has been and your borderline neutral just hanging out right at that spot where we ended July and started August so it's very interesting when it's all said and done and it's just leading into now this big week and that's why I put this here highlighted because the real question now moving forward you're gonna have tomorrow and then Friday and then next week a couple more data sets but that'll be the week of Powell the SCP the rate cut the real question is do you start melting up or down until your first set of rate cuts and then after that do you get some sort of reversal so watch out for that that is key number one then coming into key number two you have the ppi tomorrow so this does have the ability to impact bonds i highlighted that because that is very important because i do think that's more important than the cpi so today we had a lot of things playing into it again you had the debate reaction then you had the cpi and you're, you're watching everybody deal with this and now getting ready for the next event i think tomorrow you'll have a little bit more quietness and other reactions with not much going on but the ppi that can move the bonds and the bonds are very important we're going to talk about that here in a little bit so watch out for that and if anything you might even get your own little effect where bonds could be more volatile all day or in the morning tomorrow after the data and then stocks do their own thing why i say that there's a really good bond auction today on the 10-year uh, actually the 10-year came in yielding below the coupon so it was like a 3.8 bond and it was selling for 3.6 that means people there's so much demand they're willing to take less if you've been watching some of these auctions and if you don't know what i'm talking about this doesn't mean anything to you but that's pretty a uh, a big deal because we haven't seen that in a while if you have been paying attention so even with that the bonds kind of did their own thing and then by the end of the day you still had the market do the melt up so here was the bond auction bonds literally unchanged by the end of the day while markets just started going so watch if tomorrow's ppi does that but that's going to be our big event and the final data set there of the week and then the final one before powell it's going to be retail sales i made this one even in bigger text just don't forget that will be the final event but i don't know it would have to, it would have to be something i don't even know actually if it would be possible at this this point to throw the market or Powell off of this scent of getting a rate cut in September. Again, CPI jobs report. We've gotten all these events out the way. Retail sales will be the final important event. But at this point, though, I don't know if it changes the golden path and potential soft landing. So watch out for that. That is key number two. And then finally, key number three, my friends, I cannot stress to you how important the bonds are right now. One, even with the debate yesterday, give it a little bit. You know, people are saying who won. It's, it's weird. Some people are saying Trump and Kamala. Well, if you really want to know the answer, 
Give it a couple days. Remember, last time it took a couple of days even for people to say that Biden was going to be dropping out. But the bonds, they started to make decisive moves after getting volatile. So the bonds, I think, will tell you about the election and how people feel about inflation and tariffs and a lot of things moving forward, especially on the short term. They tell you about the rate cuts and what is going to happen, what people are expecting with rate cuts and those odds. And then the final thing here, the yield curve is uninverted now that just happened recently in the last week and it is starting to steepen rapidly like I talked about here in the beginning of the video. Putting all of this together what I'm trying to say is this is very important. I don't want you to be blindsided at pretty much at any moment the market can make a big move up or down and what I'm trying to say is that the bonds if there is going to be a shift remember the last shift in bonds and the last time we had a lot of these things happening you just didn't have the election it was post-election, but that was the end of a 40-year bull market. So I don't want things or any of you guys to get blindsided. What I'm trying to tell you here, factor this into the rate cuts and what's about to happen next week. I would be paying attention. There's going to be opportunities for plays, both in the short, midterm, and long-term, because this is about to be a shift. So all eyes should be on it, man. This is a, a, a very important time to pay attention. And if you have any ideas, let me know. But this would be the time to start having some ideas because all of these events and things are starting to happen. Yes, there will be even a lag on some things. So I hope you have patience. But this is all these big things occurring right here, right now. So I hope you're ready. But let us get into the play. So... Uh, Right off the bat, I hope you guys are ready again to close out this week. I would just keep your eyes on bonds and start thinking about a plan about what you're going to do with uh, the rate cuts and whether you get hard landing, soft landing, no landing, all of that. Start really thinking about that because it's time, baby. But as far as the plays, the first one I want to start off with, LAC. Uh, this is a, lith a lithium play, but honestly... Any lithium play will qualify. Commodities are going to be coming into focus with everything talking about soft landing, hard landing, even rates. So I'd watch out for that. Even you've seen what's happened with oil, but a lot of people were talking about lithium today. So this was a big deal. It really, even in the morning, all these lithium stocks were up. So I don't know if this is going to have legs or not, but if it does, you definitely want to keep watch. I think this is a good place to start the watch list, especially if the focus is going to go back to the main drivers and waiting for the cuts and all of that and whether or not you're going to get a shift any of these little news drivers and random commodities that take the spotlight it caught my attention so watch out for that that's play number one then play number two nvidia so we'll go over my play here in a little bit but i just liked how the options move today i'm glad i could highlight this because that's the only thing i really liked about it today so i'm gonna watch for a follow-up move but i was surprised dude for i bought 14 cent options they went up to like 50 cents and they got a little crazy there so it was a seven percent move on nvidia which is like 200 billion dollars in market cap it was not a small move but i like that it kind of made me want to look at some of the shorter term options even the random play i didn't sell out of the put i know but there's been some good plays with that so i want to look at that we'll see if there's attention there remember submit to nvidia so watch out for that that's going to be play number two and then finally play number three in the plays that i made today dxyz so i'm glad again i could highlight this i think this stock is an overvalued pos uh, i think we talked about this when everybody was getting really hyped on it it is a holding company that owns private equity companies it's literally a company that owns shares of spacex open ai uh what's it the klarna and like any of these like high-flying you know tech unicorns they own it so you know non-public companies so people are like oh it's a great name you could buy it but if you like go look at how much you're buying this the stock for the holding company relative to like what they own and the value it's it's very very overvalued so that's the downside to it but there has been news today. There was news about OpenAI raising money at a certain valuation. And then even the other day, there was news on SpaceX. So I'd say watch out for it. But DXYZ, if there is going to be certain headlines, this thing might react to it. So I'm not really sold on it, but I thought I would draw your attention to it. So don't be a dummy and don't get washed on it. But again, if you do hear any headlines related to SpaceX, OpenAI, or certain you know companies, go see what they're holding there. But if it is like you know private equity, non-public, they might have a chance to move. So watch out for that. That is play number three. And then finally, this was the only play we made today, and we were just on it from the morning. So I'm mad because, bro, Chad's 
had some amazing call outs today, bro. Shout out to Connor, baby, even on call real estate. But he had a, he was asking me about dailies and I was like, ah, I want them at like 1 PM. Cause I wanted them to decay and like be able to make a move. But this was early, bro. Some of the chats, Connor and a few others were talking about daily calls here and then it just flipped. So that was one play, but I'm glad cause in the morning, uh, we were prepared because I was like, hey, we had CPI, but I was saying it right from the morning, literally within like two minutes after the bell, you could check the stream alert. I went right after these plays because we knew there was going to be a NVIDIA event. So I knew they were going to be at that conference. And I was like, you know what? Let's grab it. I think there could be some cheap contracts. I thought I would scale in with these and then play it a couple times, but it wasn't until like after event, the contracts came down for like 20 minutes and then they took off and never came back. So it was a NVIDIA 130. I grabbed 20 of them this morning. This was before the event, like literally right after the bell. I got a good price, 14 cents, and then they went up, and I sold 13 of them at 27 cents. So once again, some people were shouting out, man. They were like the free share method. They said it changed their success rate, free option method. They were like if Josh went fishing, I would, you said I would catch a fish and throw back two to make it free. But you get it, baby. Amen. That's what it is because like literally – uh, the contracts I bought were $14 a pop. I bought 20 of them for $280, and then the contracts went up to $27, and I sold out 13 of them for $351. So I made just under $100 net profit by selling out of those and now I have seven free contracts so still holding those now I have no risk and honestly it allows me to hold it get some upside because lately there's been some like crazy moves and you want that upside but also too some of these plays man I'm so glad I made them free because the moment they are able to get free they'll like go up for like 10 more minutes and then you'll lose all your money so stress-free risk-free you could still risk some of your money there but ideally I like to make it free and that is what I'm going to be doing so other than that, I don't have any other plays. You got Japan ripping now in the yen. Oh, I did. Uh, I sold out of my bond short. I took a loss on that today. It was like a $700 loss. And then I made or 600 and then I made like 190 or $200 more off of the, of the yen play, the last one I was holding. So now I have no yen plays and no bonds. But if depending on what happens with Japan, I might want to get back in. But right now, I don't think that'd be a good time. We'll see what happens with the live watch list tomorrow. Other than that, though, we'll keep an eye out there. And then uh, they kind of recover towards the end, but value stocks... They got kind of clubbed today. It seemed like as people were getting confident about their one rate cut and not worried about the economy and still feeling the soft landing, you know, some of the value stocks took a little breather. But other than that, we'll see if value can make a continuation. I don't have any other plans for the long term. I'm actually eyeing some growth, but we'll see where everything goes. And then literally by the rate cut, uh, that will have all of our answers. And then the real plans moving forward, that will be it. But Chad... That is your watch list, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure Hydra Healthy ready to go. Make sure post your watch list. Make sure we see you there in the morning. I need the armor on. I need the helmet shining. And I need you to remember, man, it's as easy as visualizing it. Oh, yeah, I need you, you know, you need to stimulate it. Simulate it in your mind. I need you to visualize it and watch it, man. Trust me, from everything, stocks to not stocks, you need to visualize. Why are you not tapping into it, man? Come they don't feel me. So, Chad, I love you. Drink that water. Stay hydrated, healthy. I'll see you in the AM and horn.